Hi and welcome to CK Magazine. Today's show is all about the phenomenon that's sweeping every restaurant, every pub, um, which is the two for a tenner, or as we've, uh, as you'll hear on the podcast, two for eight pound fifty, two for six pounds ninety nine, two for five pounds ninety nine. Where does it stop? Well, I'm delighted to invite and uh, have on the show this week uh, Marcus Kilvinson from Food uh, Profits where he's been on the show before so this is his second time on the show and we're going to be talking a little bit about um, just how this phenomenon affects uh, local business especially your local restaurants Uh, in fact we cover quite a lot so keep tuned in and I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it if you want to make any comments head on over to the Facebook page uh, slash CK magazine or make sure you download the magazine subscribe to the show etc 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 but we look forward to any questions you may have on today's show Uh, leave them in the um, on the website Now, to get to the website, it's simple. It's ckmagazine.co.uk. Now, Marcus um, is a fantastic guy uh, based in the UK, in Nottingham. In fact, he's just moved to Castle Donington, as you'll find out in in today's show. But he um, runs an exciting business where he shows businesses not only how to get more customers, more bums on seats, but how to get them to come back. Uh, and uh, if you want to know more about Marcus and his company, uh, he leaves his details. Um, be sure to listen in to the end of the show. So, without any to do, let's get over and listen to today's show. Yeah, I'm really pleased to have you on again there, Marcus, because uh, this, especially with the topic we're going to talk about, I think is uh, something that's going to affect or is affecting many businesses right across the board. I know competition's uh, rough out there, but... I'll leave that to you to, for you to talk about. Today's topic, uh, well, we, we call it Two for a Tenner. I think that's a good title for the show. What do you think, Marcus? Um, yes, Mark, thank you for having me back on today. Um, it's always good to talk to you. Yeah, Two Meals for a Tenner, yeah, I think um, every time you walk up and down the high street now, you just see them everywhere, don't you? <laughs> you do. So before we go any further, I know for people who may have missed the um, you know, the first time we had you on, on in the magazine, do you want to just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what we're going to talk about today? Lovely. Okay. Well, my name's Marcus Kilvington. I'm the founder of uh, a business called Food Profits. And really what Food Profits does in just a couple of sentences is teach catering food business owners how to get more customers in the door and probably just as importantly, teach them how to get those customers to come back in the door. And we do go to people um, on a face-to-face basis, but the main focus of our business is um, on an online program. We have a membership site that's coming in a month or two, which for a sort of very small nominal fee, a caterer can learn what to do and actually have a lot of live stuff that will really teach them how to do a whole lot better in the times we're going through. I know when I first brought you on, Marcus, I think this is a skill that um, is sorely lacking across the board. There's a lot of restaurants out there, maybe they've um, got bad advice or maybe they're just you know too busy and mm-hmm. they really don't, um, they really don't, they're not very good at marketing. So I think what you're yeah. doing is, is a great thing and I know where we're dedicating um, a section to this magazine all about marketing so that restaurants can you know, um, learn some skills. But Brilliant, no, excellent. You know, yeah, nothing, really nothing beats getting hold of a professional though. And uh, I find, <laughs> I always find that, you know, if you try and do it yourself in a lot of ways, um, it's really not cost, not really productive because you spend a, a, all your life trying to work out how these things work. You never really um, get on top of it and have a systemized process and eventually you just walk away from it. Very true. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Um, I can't even begin to mention the amount of uh, restaurant sites that have obviously set up social accounts and they've set up this and they've set up the other, but actually they've never revisited. And the last post or the last YouTube or the last um, tweet or Facebook update was, you know, two thousand and eight. Yeah. And there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, I remember you saying that the other day. And I've got to put my hand up here. You can't see me, obviously, because we're taping this. But I've got my hand up. I've done that before in the past as well. Yeah. No, you're showing your age now because you just said, <laughs> you just said taping it. My son doesn't even know what a tape is anymore. <laughs> and I imagine many of uh, many restaurant owners, being a little bit older, will remember. Yeah, the I old, remember. The old, do you remember the old cassettes? <laughs> Remember it well. Still got a load downstairs. Still got an Iowa cassette player, actually, within my um, amp and uh, hi-fi system. I love it. It's good. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, I'll tell you what we're going to talk about today. Obviously, uh, two for a tenner. This is a subject that's um, really, I suppose it's sweeping the market, isn't it? And I think it's a massive dilemma. But yep. I'm not going to talk about it. You are. Because okay, you've thank written you. A, you've written a lovely article uh, in the Nottingham Post. And uh, let's, let's have a little talk about this two for one then. Tell me what it is. Tell me what it's all about. Tell me what... Um, and, and fire, fire away. 
All right, lovely. Well, thanks, Mark. Well, yeah, I mean, the article I've just written for the Nottingham Post is um, really what we're going to talk about now. And it's very much about, you know, you go, we said a minute or two ago, you go up and down the high street and wherever you are, I don't think it matters really wherever you are now. And lots and lots of pubs, restaurants, cafes, whatever they are, are doing two meals for £10. And I saw one the other day, and I know before you've, um, I won't use the word tape again, then before you started to record this, we had a chat about, you were out the other day, and you went out, you, I forget where it was, you said, I won't mention it anyway, although we probably would, it doesn't matter, but you went out and had two fish and chip meals for around about a fiver or something crazy, or a bit more than that. And, and I saw one the other day, you know, two meals for 8 49 and there was something the other day, I saw a pub down the road from me, it was one course um, I think for a fiver, you could have two courses for five pound fifty, and you could have three courses for eight pounds. Oh. And that was a little independent pub. And so, kind of, my question is: is you know, if you're a customer going out, two meals for ten pounds, is it good value, or really is it half the quality? Because two for meals for ten pounds sounds fantastic, doesn't it? I mean, you know, what a bargain! Fabulous. Let's not bother cooking at home tonight. Yeah, yeah, Let's just go than, out. Cheaper than cook than shopping. Cheaper than cooking, really, isn't it? You kind of think. Um, but I've been out to a few of these places and I think a lot of the reason a lot of caterers are doing this is because they're trying to get more people in the door. I mean, that's what it's all about. And my hobby horse, I mean, this is really what we do at Food Profits. It's, you know, if you're a catering owner, whether it's a pub, a restaurant, a cafe, a deli, it doesn't really matter what type of catering business you run. Your fundamental objective is to get people in the door and your second objective is to get those people to come back in the door. So I think a lot of caterers are thinking, well, yeah, if we do two for a tenner, we're going to get a whole lot more people in. And my question to any caterer would be, ask yourself this question, is you might think you can get more people in the door for £2.10, but there's two things going to go on. The first thing is, can you make any money doing two meals for £10? Um, Because you've got to have a whole lot more customers coming in your door to make as much money if you're selling the food less. I mean, it's just common mathematics, I suppose, isn't it? But I suppose some people, not not being cheeky from me here, actually kind of don't think about the maths behind it. They kind of think, oh, yeah, two meals for £10, we'll get a whole load of people in. Fantastic. But how many more people, and if I asked the average caterer, they actually probably wouldn't know the answer to this question. How many more people do you need to get in the door to break even, Mark? Um, and that's the key, you know, break even before you even start to make any real profit on having two people in, you know, two meals for a tenner. And so I've been to a few of these places recently and my mum and dad um, had a great experience a few weeks ago and they kind of came back from this pub down the road from where they live, two meals for a tenner. They actually said to me something along the lines, we're never, ever going to go anywhere for two meals for a ten pounder ever again. I kind of said, well, you know, why? I kind of probably knew the answer to be fair. But, but I sort of said, why? And they said, well, because it was just diabolical quality. It was awful. And I think they both had, they had, to tell you what they had, they had like pie mash and veg. And the pie was, I don't know where you've seen these, Mark, but it's one of those pies that's got what I would describe as the really massive big crust on the side. A bit like, if you know, like Cornish pasties used to be, so you kind of got like where it's all plattered at the oh, back. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much the pie, I kid you not, was pretty much all pastry. And it had got round about, I think they said, between three and four pieces of meat in the pie. And I don't know whether you've ever had and I. I love meat, right? You get, you've got me on the hobby horse here. I, I, I better cut this a bit shorter, but I love meat and I love decent quality meat. And what in this pie they were telling me is like out of the four pieces of meat, two of them were those like horrible fatty type of pieces of meat, you know, that are really kind of tough, fatty, oh, horrible yeah, bits. Yeah, yeah. And then the potato was sort of, it looked like it was powdered mash and the vegetables looked like they'd been cooked, you know, for about 20 minutes too long. So, all right, you could say that's down to, but of course, then the thing is, well, if you don't think it's of any half decent quality, are you going to go back no matter how cheap it is? And of course, the answer really is no, you're not. Because whether it's two for a tenner or two for 573 or two for 849, if the quality isn't there, then you aren't going to go back. And there might be people like listen to this and go, well, yeah, well, you know, what do you expect, Marcus? Two for, ten, two for 10 pounds. Well, I'll tell you what I expect. I expect good quality. And if you can't do good quality for two for 10 pounds, you need to seriously think about having a different strategy i think if i can just talk for a little bit more mark before you uh, before you jump in um obviously a lot of people will say well everybody else is doing it down the high street you know the big pub chains the yeah. weatherspoons the marstons the marstons are doing two for a ten of the weatherspoons they're all doing it just about spirit i was at the other day a flaming grill you know again two for ten pounds fair and square another spirit on um, two for ten pounds so a lot of people immediately think well We've got to do it, otherwise we're not going to get people in the door. And my first 
actually reaction with that they will be actually you know what no you haven't got to do it and my strong suggestion is that you actually don't do it particularly if you're an independent caterer or pub or cafe because actually you let me make this very very clear you will not be able to compete with the chains on it and they've got a lot more backing and resource than you have and you are going to go out of business pretty much if you start to do that and that's my first point the second point is if you are a big chain doing it just let them do it and think about how you as an independent caterer can add a ton more value and the, give your customer an experience when they come in that isn't about what I would describe as poor quality food, no matter how cheap it is, Mark. Be- actually, before, you know, we talked slightly a um, few minutes before we started this recording, just um, expand a little bit on how these chains probably manage it and whether or not it is sustainable in the long term. Okay, well, that's a great question. And um, if you look in the press or you follow, um, I'm sure you do, I'm sure probably a lot of caterers listening to this do, but if you follow people like Big Hospitality or you read Cater and Hotel Keeper, and for anybody listening that might not do this, you can actually sign up for Big Hospitality's emails every day. They'll send them every day. And actually, after you've read about five or six, you'll kind of get, <laughs> you won't be able to read them all because they send too many. But the point of this is, is they'll give you a lot of heads up on what's going on in the catering industry across the UK. And you'll see that a lot of these chains, actually, some of the bigger chains, actually have got serious amounts of debt that they are trying to restructure or fund and all the rest of it. So don't just think if you're a small caterer or you're an independent small pub group, maybe regionally, don't just think that they, you know, they can last forever because the truth is they can't. You know, black and white is if you're not making no matter whether you're a Weatherspoons or a Spirit or a Punch or a Stonegate or whoever, if you're not making the financial pound notes every week, every month, eventually, at some point, you are going to go out of business. If you look at Orchid pubs, you know, a few years ago, I think it was back in 2008 when they went into administration, you know, they've changed the strategy and a lot of stuff since then. But, you know, pub groups can go, can go bang, no matter how, you know, sort of how big. So I think, you know, in answer to that, Mark, don't be don't be led by what everybody else is doing. Mm. Think about how you can be different. Think about how you can give somebody that customer experience when they come in. And the other thing, of course, now you've got to consider, which is huge in this, is if you were a customer and you walk along the high street and you've got all these places doing the two for ten pounds, here's my question I want you to think about this. What is going to make that customer go into your catering food business when everybody else is also doing 10 for 2, two for 10 pounds or less. Yeah, I think the coming the, the second part of the equation, getting people to come back, we'll cover that in a bit. Um, don't remind me because I want to come back to that part of the equation. I will. I'll make a little note. Yeah, especially because uh, it actually ties in with the Groupon thing that sometimes, you know, the front end doesn't, if you don't get the front end right, yeah, it can bankrupt you at the back end. Totally agree. But, but um. There's a moral question here, because just like when there was a lot of independent petrol stations, etc., yeah, and all of a sudden now there isn't because huh. the supermarkets um, led a you know a, a price war on on fuel at the forecourt, and yeah. people went all, so everybody went to the supermarkets to save that few pence on a litre, yeah. and yeah. all the independents closed down. Yeah. Now I, I, it's no secret I'm not a fan of the chains. Uh, in fact, I just reviewed a, an app. Um, I believe uh, it'll be in this month's edition of Commercial Kitchen Magazine. It's called No Chains App, where you can actually, it just has independent restaurants that you can find in, in an yeah. app, you know, so you open like it, up, it you put where you uh, are, and it will actually just list, um, and it links to restaurant menus, and you can see, so it's really clever, but it's only in New York and blah, at the minute. Like it, it's it, good, it's good a idea. Great, yeah, it's a great idea, because uh, I... Always, or even now, Marcus, I still think where, and I still get asked, where should we go for lunch? Where should we go for dinner? And, yep. and I still scratch my head, despite Yeah, you fact, like me. Yeah, I, you know, I said to you last time, um, you know, I always say, yeah, McDonald's, <laughs> because it gets, it gets everybody thinking, and they go, no, we don't want to go there. <laughs> so we always, you know, we always find somewhere else to go. But um, yeah. the, the moral question, do you think there is a moral question here? Because ultimately, go on, we're, going to end go on, just, we're going to end up just with chains. Yeah, and then they're going to put the prices up. Yeah, and it's going to cost yep. you twenty quid for a bowl of soup and a piece of bread. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, the moral question. I mean, 
What's quite interesting, if I can go off a slight tangent with this relevant to this, I got approached by a couple of people, you and I probably talked about this before, but the listeners um, probably haven't heard this, but I, I, with two other people, have just set up something in the East Midlands called the East Midlands Food Group, and that's all very much about helping local caterers and also fishmongers and butchers and people like that, that local community-led producers can I come together and have a point of focus so they can help each other and all do better. So if you like it, it's what I would describe as the power of collaboration. Maybe a bit like what you're talking about with the app with New York, and, and that's what we're also looking at doing, like a loyalty scheme for independence. So if, you, if you're out, you know, you're more likely to go to an independent if you've got a loyalty scheme and it's great experience, etc. And it also helps the community and helps those businesses to keep sustaining and just carrying on. So, so the moral question for me is, um, yeah, I mean, if you look at Costas and Starbucks, um, you know, they're making millions every year. And yeah, I mean, I won't even go into that tax issue with Starbucks recently because, you know, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of talk about that. But yeah, there is a moral issue for me because, you know, ultimately, um, without me sounding like I'm going to be sort of evangelical now and, and spiritual and all those sort of things, although I actually am, it's about helping each other. And for me, if you go and give your money, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but if you go and give your money to some great big chain and all the rest of it, even if they're slightly cheaper, um, sometimes, and they're not always anyway, is that, you know, is that helping your community, the local guy or girl down the road that's running a cafe or a deli or, you know, supplying potatoes and carrots and parsnips and stuff from the fields in your little village? You know, so there is a moral question. I totally agree. And if you think more now, and I think this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it will do, is people's, you know, perception of looking after, looking after planet Earth that we live on. And part and parcel of looking after planet Earth that we live on is also having a responsibility to your fellow human being as to like, you know, looking after people and helping them thrive and prosper, not just the big boys out there. I totally agree. And I, uh, I don't mind spending a few extra pence or pounds uh, to support local, you know, a local restaurant. Totally. Tell you what, well, can I tell you a quick little story? Yesterday, I've just moved house um, to, to a place called Castle Donington near, near Derby. And my, I'm a bit like you with the whole quality thing. And, and, and just lately, I've just been kind of like, where can I go to get better fruit and veg and better meat and all these things? Anyway, there's a farm shop down the road, literally in a village from here, just down the road from here. And um, I thought, I'm going to go and try it out. So yesterday morning, Sunday morning, I go over to this place and I go in. It's a lovely little farm shop, deli, da, 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 da. And um, just talking about prices, this is the point of this little story. Um, for some, for organic milk, which is about a litre of organic milk, it was about one pound fifteen. Now, if you go to, and I, I, will, I will, will mention the name because this is this is factual. Um, if you go to someone like Tesco and you buy a litre of something like Eo Valley again organic milk, it's a pound. So you're spending fifteen p more down the little local shop. And, and I also bought some eggs, you know, proper proper eggs, Mark, proper eggs, mm-hmm. just from the farm down the road. They were one pound thirty for half a dozen. Now. That's actually cheaper than most of the supermarkets. Yeah, it is. So, you know, I think there's a perception out there, isn't there? There's a perception that often people think, oh, yeah, quality food, farm shops, farmers markets, it's going to be more expensive. And I'll tell you something, often it's not. Yes, sometimes it is, yeah, but often it's not. You know, it's interesting. I I don't want to go off tangent really here because uh, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of regulation and bureaucracy around food. And, yep. and milk, etc. And uh, you know, there was a guy I know in, in America who was uh, banged up in prison for um, selling his, uh, you know, bartering milk. Yeah. Because it didn't go through the official, you know, milk yep. channel. And all it was was the poor guy was, um, you know, I think he was, you know, local farmer or whatever, and he made a deal to swap, I don't know, chickens for milk and whatever. But uh-huh. he, but he was buying. He had too much milk, so he offset some of that and passed some of that milk on to other other friends. Yeah, at cost, but yeah. the body of um, that, that, that regulates it all got involved, and they yeah. put, and they banged him in prison. It's crazy, isn't it? Because isn't it has crazy? to go through the board, and the board has to you know whatever treat the milk and add whatever chemicals to make yeah. it all compliant and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway, let's not go down Bad. that tangent. <laughs> okay. The the second. Let's talk about the second part of, uh, of this. So, you, you, what you're saying is. Competing in the long run is 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 uh, maybe a, a route a route to bankruptcy. Even yep. the, even the chains probably can't sustain it. 
They can't, not for a long period. They absolutely can't. Because if you're not gonna... making enough cash, you can't make it. You can't just do it. That's right. We're probably going to end up in a situation where um, the biggest sufferer here is going to be the independents, and we're going to lose our, our ability to choose because there's not going to be a choice. A bit like the high street today. It's basically, mm. it's boots, it's, you know, it's just the spec savers. It's the, vis- yeah. vis- it's the same high street wherever you go. Yeah, you're right. Because all the the local interest in um, shops uh, just can't make it work. Yeah. Um, and like you said, all the money's flowing out to multinationals, big corporates, chains, whatever. So it yeah. really doesn't support and help and grow, um, you know, our communities at all. Yeah. Yeah. So the second part, I think, Offer something different. That's fine. You've mentioned that. What about how do you, you know, give people a freebie listening in? How do you get people coming back? Because I think ultimately I've done it myself. I've shopped on a deal. I've gone on to Voucher Cloud or I've gone on to wherever when I've been in a, particularly in a town that I didn't know. Yeah. And I've uh, found somewhere local to me, gone in there, had a quick meal, spent me 15 quid or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and I'm never going to go back <laughs> because yeah. I'm only in that town once. Right. But if I'm going to walk down into the town and I'm looking for something to eat, yeah. let's talk about the second part of the equation. We've got them in the door yeah. because we've, um, we're have we offering something different, Yeah. good value, not yeah. not the two for £10. But how do we get them to come back? How do we right. increase that value? Okay, right. Um, there's 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 lots of things, and we yeah, you and I could talk for hours about this. I mean, we do things like one day workshops on this, a whole like ten hours on this. Um, I know it sounds intensive, but there's so much you can go through. So, just for the purpose of this conversation with you and me, I'm going to actually cut, cut, keep it very succinct. Um, the, the, there's two parts to to getting people to come back. Whether you run a restaurant, a fish and chip shop, it doesn't matter. Whatever catering business, there's two bits, just two bits. So let's focus on that. Bit number one or part number one is you've got to give those people a great experience. And again, this is a huge subject. So I know you and I have spent many times talking about this, but just for all the listeners, let me just uh, expand this a little bit. When I say give people a great experience, you've got to have people that go in their heads when they've been to see you, eaten with you, had all that experience. You've got to kind of have them, hopefully, this is really what, this is the ultimate. You want them to kind of go, wow, in their head. Mm. So when my mum and dad went out the other week and had two for a tenner, they didn't go, wow. They went, ugh, we're not going back there again. <laughs> sure. We're not going back there again because it didn't, it didn't not just exceed their expectations. It actually didn't fulfill their expectations. So you might go, hey, great, yeah, we've got them in the door, two for ten, fantastic. But here's the, here's the big point, right? You can tell I'm, I'm getting animated because I'm getting louder. If, even at two pounds for ten pounds, if you don't give that customer their perception of a great experience or great food or decent food and all the rest of it, you won't get them back in. You won't get back in. After, actually, ladies and gentlemen, what also might happen is you actually might do yourself a really big injustice in so much as actually they would go, right, we're definitely not going back in again because it was so bad the first time. So ultimately, the thing you have to do, whatever food business you're in, you've got to give people a great experience when they come in, whether it's two for a tenner. So in the article I wrote for the Evening Post, kind of one of the things I put in there, you know, somebody might say to themselves, well, do you know what, Marcus? It's, it's only £10 for two meals. So it don't really need to be very good, does it? Yes, it does. Because if it ain't very good, why are you going to go back? Why would you spend £10? You might as well save your money, Mark. You might as well spend 20 quid and go out less often and have a better meal and go back because it's really important to get a great experience. Um, if I just can expand that a little bit more, a lot about giving people a great experience doesn't have to cost you, the food business owner, any money. Little things like I was interviewing a guy. I know you do lots of interviews with some great people and um, – I was interviewing a guy a few weeks ago called David Moore. And for those of the people that aren't listening to this that don't know who David Moore is, David Moore's been in the industry a long, long time. He runs two Michelin star restaurants in London. He runs one called um, um, Pierre de Terre and he runs another one called Lutre Pierre. And they're both Michelin star restaurants. Um, I had the privilege of interviewing him and watching him. And if I can sum it up for everybody about getting people back in the door, he said, you've got to give people that whole humanistic experience. And actually what he said was, he actually said to me, he said, do you know what, Marcus, if the food isn't quite 10 out of 10, but they get the whole great feeling experience that they're looked after by nice people who care for them, actually they will always come back, Mark, is what he said to me. 
And he's right. So a lot of that humanistic experience that I and, and David Moore talked about is all very much about engaging with people, like acknowledging people, talking to people, asking them if they're having a great meal, asking them if you can help them in any other shape or form, thanking them when they walk in your door, acknowledge them with 30 seconds when they come in, you know, hello, thank you so much for coming. When they leave, take the time to say, thank you so much for coming to see us. We really hope to see you again. Just little things that will cost you seconds in time. But if all your staff are trained to do that, it makes a big, big difference. And people are more likely to come back, even even if the food wasn't quite spot on that lunchtime or evening mark. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that you have to do to get people to come back. And a lot of people now will go, oh, how do we do that? Or, oh, that's a bit intrusive, isn't it? Or, or you'll come up with some excuse like that. But it's really crucial. And you'll know this. This will be rooted in your bones, Mark, is you have to begin to get to know your customers that come in your restaurant, your pub, your deli, your cafe, your coffee shop, whatever business you run. And in an ideal world, you need to start to get their contact details, whether it's their mobile telephone number, whether it's their email. And if I can just give one top tip on this this recording we're doing together, is if you only do one thing as a catering owner, get your customers' email address and telephone number when they come to see you. Now, I could spend hours on this with you as well, Mark, and everybody listening, but some people are now going to be going, well, how do we do that, Marcus? Well, here's here's my suggestion. Again, this is, if you like, this is two for the price of one here from Marcus, yeah? Two top tips for the price of one. Here's what you do. You need to give something away of great value. So here's one for you, right? I'll give you an example. and I'll I'll pick a difficult one, Mark, because somebody will say, might be easy if you're a restaurant, Mark, or a pub. I'm a fish and chip shop. I run a fish and chip shop. How on earth am I going to get people's contact details? Right, here's what you do. You come up with, let's say, once a month you have an offer and you make it a really good offer and you go, once a month we're going to give away meal for four for the whole family, fish and chips up supper, kind of like the whole thing on us once a month. All you do is you fill this little card in when you come and get your fish and chips, it goes into the, the box on the counter, da, 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 da. And instantaneously you start to build yourself a database of people who come and visit your fish and chip shop. So... My tip is, whatever you do, give something away as a teaser and entice. You'll see people do do this. And here's my, if you want to call it, secret within this tip. And that is, be outrageous. And what I mean by that, be outrageous. I get through my door, and I bet you do, Mark, and probably everybody listening to this, gets through the door probably once a week. And I'll use this example, Indian restaurants and Indian takeaways, menus through the door. And nearly they're all the same. They're over people are going to pull me up on this going to go, no, they're not all the same marks, but I'm going to tell you what's the same on all of them. Pretty much 99% of them. That is that they all deliver within a three mile radius free, that they'll give you a bottle of wine if you spend over 20 pounds and or if you take away from the takeaway menu, you might get 10% off or some of the more outrageous ones might be 20%. off. So here's my suggestion. You've got to be more outrageous than that. So you want to really give something away. So if you're fish and chip shop, meal for four, the whole works, not just fish and chips. Don't be tight. You're only going to do it once a month. So you might go, oh, my goodness, how much money are you giving away? Whoa, wrong thinking. If you're thinking how much money you're giving away, you're thinking short term. We want to be thinking long term. And if you have something that's a really attractive offer, people are going to go, right, here's my, here's my, here's my details because I would love to win that fish and chips option for my whole family, the whole shebang once a month. Thank you. There you go. There's my details. So I hope that gives you a bit of a flavour, Mark, about how you can get people to come back. Do you know what? That's brilliant. <laughs> I'll tell you, as always, though, it'll be the people that implement that will uh, see the highest value in that. So true. So I, true. Um, I'll give a tip in my lowly capacity. Re- You're not lowly, Mark. Remember my name. <laughs> when I come back in the door, if you, know, if you can tell me my name when I come back in that door and say, hey, hi, Mark, usual, or hi, Mark, what are you having today? I will be coming back. You will. And you know, it's so amazing true. how many how many restaurants you can go to more than once, two, three, four, five times, and they still don't know your name. They don't make yeah. that effort to find out. And you know, it's as simple as teaching your staff to take a note of the card that they pay with. Yeah. When they give you the card to pay, you, you look at the name. Now, it might not, not necessarily be them. So if there's a guy stood there and the card is, uh, you know, Anna, <laughs> it's probably yeah. his wife's card but yeah. um it's a tip where you can non-invasive you don't have to ask 
you just clock the name on the card and you say, oh, thank you, Mr. Taylor, or thank you, Mark, for coming. Hopefully we'll see you again. Yeah. And if I walk back in that door the next time and, the, you know, if I'm, if I'm fortunate to meet the same staff in a fish and chippy, that's easy. Um, yeah. But they say, oh, hi, Mark. Where would you like to sit? Same table as before. What, that's going to endear me. Yeah. And I'm going to think, you know what? what? They've made an effort. How did they get yeah. my name? Yeah. So that's my tip. You're absolutely right. And you've just touched on something which is obviously massively important in what you said just before you gave that example. You said teach the staff. Yeah. And you are totally on the money there, Mark. And what a lot of catering owners don't do is they don't teach the staff. And it, everything, it's all about education. It's all about teach the staff to do better because they're, they are a reflection of your business. Oh, absolutely. Hey, um, right. So if anybody wants to know any more information, check you out. Um, give us a, have a little punt. Tell us uh, where, you, where they can find out more about Oh, all right. Do. Okay. Well, in the next, I don't know when you're broadcasting this, but in the next few weeks, we're going to be launching a membership site. Um, if you go to food-profits.com, or if you go to marketingrestaurant.co.uk, there's tons of stuff on there. There's a whole load of free stuff as well, ladies and gents. So there's things like downloads and some guides on marketing. There's a, a book we've just written, short book on the five reasons that caterers fail. Gives you the top five reasons and what you can do about those. And there's a whole sode of free of um, videos taken from our workshops um, a few months ago, about an hour and a half's free content, all massive, great value, all free. And um, if you want to pay us for some money, there's some uh, some stuff on there you can buy as well. Fantastic. Did you want to ask me about Groupon just before we go? Well, the, the reason I mentioned Groupon, that's right, was purely the um, the fact that if you get the deal wrong, you know, sometimes, yeah. it, you know, this two for ten pound thing, um, if there's a long term strategy to it, I can see how it might work. You know, just like selling milk for less than it costs you and it brings you into a supermarket. But the strategy is that you have to walk all the way through every aisle to get all yeah. the way to the back of the store before uh-huh. you actually pick up the milk. Now, you might have uh-huh. saved 20p, but chances yeah. are you're going to walk past the batteries, you're going to walk past the suntan cream, you're going to walk past and you think, oh, you know, I do need that, I do need that. Yeah. And I very, 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 very rarely can go into a supermarket for just bread and milk. Yeah. Because I'll walk out and I've picked up you know, the buns that were on offer and something else that was on two for one. And yeah. So I ended up walking out with a, a 20 quid, 30 quid bill. Yeah. Just on a impulse shop for some milk. Yeah. Uh, the same with Groupon, you know, you, you bring people in to take an offer that's yeah. probably going to lose your money. Yeah. However, if the offer is a longer offer, i.e. the strategy is to get there, you know, show them a promotion or get their email address or demonstrate your, Something there's a long term strategy to it, so that you are going to get people back, and you've not just had 500 customers come in the door and leave, but you've actually yep. pulled in 500 customers and sure. te- got 400 details. Yeah, you can now market. You know, yep. your, your Valentine's night, your sure. um, you know, your Christmas lunches, whatever. So you've now got a long term strategy. So yep. so it may have lost you money at two for a ten. You might have lost five pound on you know per head. Yeah. So that promotion may have cost you. In this example, two and a half thousand times five, so ten grand. Yeah. However, it's going to bring in possibly two hundred people for your Christmas dinner, two hundred and fifty people for your Valentine's night. Yeah. So you can recoup it by having a long term strategy. That's right. That's, and that's true. That's why bringing them back, uh, the two for ten pound thing. Although the quality and all the things we've talked about, I think there is possibly promotion you know, there's a long-term strategy here and i think that's why people need to contact people like you to develop those long-term strategies so that they take maximum advantage of their marketing budget you know their spend because that's yeah. what it really is yeah it's a it's a marketing budget you're that two thousand three thousand five thousand pounds it's cost you to run that promotion yeah is is what you've spent in lieu of the adverts in the in the in the papers and the adverts in the magazines and the radio and whatever yeah, so, true. So, but people need to approach it like that before they before they even set the menu, you know, and not think afterwards, oh, we really should have got their details. Yeah, it's you, true, isn't you, it? You know, what I, yeah, you know what I mean. I think the only people who benefit from um, from Groupon is is Groupon. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> and the thing I'd sort of ask people to think about if you're thinking about doing Groupon, I saw Groupon the other day were one of Marco Pierre White's restaurants. I saw that and. Did you see that as well? Yeah, yeah. 25 or something. 
Yeah, it was something like that. And of course, the only reason people do Groupon is to get people in the door. I mean, you know, it's as simple as that. If someone's doing Groupon, it just tells you they are not getting enough customers in the door, period. Um, and so you're absolutely right, Mark, totally right. And, you know, how can you view it long-term strategy and, and work it for, for the best advantage? You know, how can you really make it work for you? Yeah, you've got to be thinking long-term Thanks rather than just well, short-term. Well, thank you very much for your time this morning. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me on again. No, no, thank you. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you next month in the magazine. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Take care, bud. Take care. Bye-bye. A very special thank you there to Marcus Kilvington from Food Profits. Now, Marcus has been a great friend to the show, great friend to the magazine. I'm really looking forward to um, his input uh, in the future editions. Uh, So I really suggest, I highly suggest you check him out over at uh, uh, food-profits.co.uk. UK. Um, now, next edition of uh, Commercial Kitchen Magazine is coming very, very shortly, about to hit the newsstand, and you'll have noted that it's now available for the iPad and the iPhone. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so there's a lot happening in the background, and uh, we make this. Um, we'd like you to help us get the message out, uh, share the post, share the video, and indeed um, help and um, tell your peers about Commercial Kitchen Magazine. There's an opportunity to contribute. If you wish to contribute, you wish to leave us any comments, any background, any reviews, that would be uh, absolutely fantastic. Head on over to CK Magazine forward slash app. That'll take you to the actual application. If you want to leave a review go on over to iTunes, uh, leave us a review on iTunes, that would be uh, amazing. So thank you very much uh, for those of you that have listened this far, and uh, we look forward to producing the next show, uh, which will be very, very soon. 